Hallelujah. While we're still standing, let's go before God right now. Father, you are the Almighty. There is none greater than you. You're the King of Kings. You're the Lord of Lords. The lily of the valley. The bright morning star. Your promises are always pure. I can count on you and I can believe in what you say. God, I thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for teaching me how to love because you loved me first. I don't know of any other God that would give up their own begotten son. That we who have been passed on and we who are still here and those of us who are to come will already have the price paid that we might have a right to the tree of life. God, we give you glory right now for that. God, we thank you for that. God, we praise you for that. Oh, we worship you right now for that. And we thank you for who you are. God, we ask you right now that you will come with your presence in this room. That you will begin to remove our conscious mind. And take us into a spiritual mind. God, remove my natural eye. And open up my spiritual eye. That I might be able to see what it is that you would have for me to see. So that I might know the direction that you want me to go in your will. God, close my natural ear. Open up my spiritual ear. So that we may be able to hear what it is that you have for us to hear. In your word you say faith come by hearing. And by hearing of your word. We thank you for the opportunity that you will bring forth your word tonight. God, right now I'm asking that you will soften our hearts. That you will liquefy every callous, every callalistic hardness that would cause us not to be able to receive. Take your word and hide it there in our hearts. Bestow your word upon us tonight, God. Bless us in a mighty way. Transform some soul tonight, God. Anyone who is searching for something and they need an answer, bless them with it tonight, God. Somebody that needs a healing, not just in their body, but in their spirit and in their mind. Heal them through your word. God, we love you. And we thank you. Father, right now, I commit my spirit unto you. Make me low, God. Make me low, God. I offer my body so that your Holy Spirit may give utterance to your word tonight. Ooh, hallelujah, God. Return me to the fold when you have completed what you have to say, God. Bibles, turn with me to the third chapter of Daniel. We'll be beginning at the eighth verse. You can keep it going if you like. It's on you, whatever you feel. Third chapter of Daniel, beginning at the eighth verse. I want to read a major portion of this passage. It's the third chapter of Daniel, just after Ezekiel, the Old Testament. When you have it, say amen. amen. Wherefore at that time, 
certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou, which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods? nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, the midst of the, if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of, of, of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this manner. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these, men were, then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew these men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. Come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, 
Meshach and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princesses and the governors and the captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own God. Ha. Huh. I don't know. It already got hot in here for me. Let me make sure I got my towel ready. We were used for a theme. Commitment creates a fire that won't go out. Commitment will create a fire that won't go out. We can see, if we just look at the word commitment, sometimes I don't know if we even hold that word in reverence anymore. Sometimes even some of us in our marriages, we may have had a ceremony they may have even thrown the rice. Some people even jumped the broom. But was there really a commitment to each other? Because we say that we will do. And we say the vows. But the soon as the text, the small little text, or as soon as the trials and tribulations of that unity come, even if we don't divorce, we seem to check out from each other. Where is the commitment in that? Commitment. Some of us haven't been able to even realize the power and the expectation and the exaltation that God can do for us because we have not begin to practice the idea of committing to anything ever in our lives. We went to school. We had committed to the studies. We got on our jobs that we didn't like, so we have committed to the job. But we would not realize had we committed and thrown our whole selves into anything that God's will is a part of, or even that we dream, the apex of what could possibly come out of that commitment. But we can see here in this story an example of the impossible that just a decision to commit can do. When we commit, we start to decide that we're going to develop a protocol to find out the direction and God's will for our lives. How do we do that? The first thing we do, because God in the beginning provided for us a free will. You know, God is almighty. He can make you do whatever he wants. But he has angels for that. He created us in his image so that we might be able to manifest Jesus. his image on the earth. Jesus. So the first thing that we have to do when we create the opportunity to commit is to decide that that is what we're going to do. Some people, it takes a long time because they keep procrastinating. Even if they know what it is that God 
wants them to do. They try to find the easy way around. Or they want to find another route. Or because they realize that they are gifted by God. That they will get to it when they finish with what they're doing. But when we make a commitment. We take a moment. And we decide. For God I live. And for God I die. And at that moment. We run forward, never looking back. And every day that we wake up, we wake up with a plan for what God's will is that day for our lives. And not only do we have the plan, every day we institute the plan. And this is not about feelings and emotions. Because feelings and emotions, they come in waves. They come and they go. But when you are committed, it's not about how you feel. Because sometimes when God wakes you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and you don't feel like praying or you don't feel like turning the light on to get your word and begin to read, with a commitment, we do it anyhow. When he desires for you to fast, and it might not even be about you, it might be about somebody else. With a commitment, we do it. Because when we start to throw our whole selves into our dreams, then God can truly manifest himself in us. But we have a challenge, and we have an issue. And this is not about age, because it don't matter if you're 80 or if you're three. Being committed to God, he will manifest his gifts in you from that moment. A lot of times we sit and we say, well, I, I, I've been, I've been a part of this work for a long time. I, I, I should have been further along in my walk with God than I am now. And the reason why you're not further along, and it's not the devil, and it's not demons, and it's not haters, it's the fact that you have not fully committed yourself to doing the will of God that he has begun to stretch that it's in you to do. The moment that you begin to receive and accept that commitment, then God can progress you on to where he has gifted you to be. The enemy will try his best to rob you of your gift. He will try his best to rob you of a mentality and a spirituality that will allow you to commit. Even to the point that he will try to do like God and change your name. Just like these three young men. These men are dedicated men. Committed to God. These weren't even their names in the beginning. There was Hananiah. There was Mishael. And there was Azariah. Great men of God. Committed to everything that God would have them to do. If we move back in the pretext of this text, we will find how they proved their commitment along with one of their best friends whose name was Daniel, who the enemy also tried to change his name to Balthazar. But God in his great wisdom and infinite power created a platform that those men could begin to show their commitment that opportunity to be focused 
to be joined, to be connected, to be committed. When the King Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of the superpower at that time, the super mighty empire of Babylon, who had taken into captivity the Israelites, along with other countries as well. Superpower with very many countries under their rule, very many languages and very many provinces. He brought thousands of the elite, best of the Israelites to his kingdom. And he was going to take three years to indoctrinate them with the Babylonian way. Because his empire was so vast, there were very many languages and very many cultures. So he was trying to be smart and he was going to take the best from all those countries and the best that spoke all those languages and the best at those cultures and indoctrinate them with the Babylonian way. Then send them back out to rule and to govern all his provinces. Oh, but he brought a few in that began to say, we already have the best. He brought somebody in that says, we already have been indoctrinated with a true culture. And even if you want us to be here, we want to live by the way that God has chosen us to live. We want to eat by the way that God has chosen for us to eat. And if you could have just allow us to, to, to prosper in our own way that God has designed us to do, when you present us before the king, you will see the example of what it means to be committed. Oh, when they were presented before the king and he saw the greatness and the image of God on them, all of them were set in high places. But we're not just dealing with any regular king. We're dealing with a king that lived with the mental illnesses, mood swings, narcissistic personality, didn't know who he was worshiping or serving. So his vocabulary would never say God. His vocabulary would say God's. He would worship whatever was at his fancy at the moment. He was king of a great empire. So much so to the point that he began to create his own images, commanding everyone to worship. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but since God has begun to reveal himself to me and show that he is real, I cannot imagine seeing myself Worship something that I could actually create with my own hands. God doesn't need an image for you to worship. Because when he created us, he created us in his image. So there doesn't need to be any more images because he has already perfected what image is about. But when we commit... It's not just a matter of saying, I'm committed. It's a matter of proving. It's a matter of standing up. The word of God says that you can't serve two masters. You're going to have to love one. And you're going to hate the other. There ain't no gray. You can't hear the all kinds of music and the decree is you bow down and worship. You can't half bow down. Or you can't when you hear the music all of a sudden try to run and hide. You have to stand upon what you have been committed to. And whatever the circumstances may be, whatever the cost or the price may be, whether that be reward or whether that be torment, you have to know that you are committed to what you are committed to. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. You either one, but be committed. 
Because even if you're cold and we know that we need to put some hot, strike a fire up under you to heat you up. If you're hot, then we can just fan it and let the flames begin to get higher. But if you look warm, I don't know what to do with you. Commitment. So here we are. The King Nebuchadnezzar, evil man, decided in his narcissistic personality, that's a personality where it's about me. Everything is about me. If something goes wrong, it ain't my fault. I'm going to find those to blame. Somebody look at me wrong. I will chop them up and make their house a dong heel. Somebody doesn't want to do what I say. Now I have built a furnace. This furnace wasn't to fire up bricks to build anything. This furnace was designed for punishment. You don't do what I say, I'll burn you alive. That's the kind of king that we're dealing with. Now we might not have a Nebuchadnezzar for say physically, but the enemy is on the same intense route in our lives, making decrees to us in our minds, forcing us to think in a certain way and then causing consequences to be on us if we don't do what he says. That's why this story is even here. To let you know that you have to stand on what you know and then see me manifest myself through your commitment. So here we have these three men. And when we think about the number three, we think about the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But when God created us, he also created a tribe, being, mind, which contains our soul, body, which is the flesh, and spirit, which is the true me sent down from heaven to exist here on this earth to do what it is that God would desire for me to do. The purpose man that God sent. So it's like, wow, even the story, three men. So what we begin to see through this story is that we have to be joined, connected, focused, and committed. Just like these three men, one of them could have chosen not to be thrown in the fire. So it lets us know that we as a tripart being, we have, the, the way that we are committed is that we have to be all in. Mind, which is the soul, body, which is the flesh, and spirit, which is the man that God sent down here to do what it is that we have to do. We have to be committed to each other. Each part has to be committed to the other part in order for God to manifest himself. Does that make sense? So here we see that the enemy is an accuser of the brethren. So in this story, the Chaldeans, which were the sorcerers and the astrologers and the, the ones who practiced witchcraft, began to see that the Jews were not doing what the king had said to do. And that's how the enemy is with us. Jesus. He goes before God. Just like he did in the story of Job. Came before God like the rest of the angels. To accuse the brethren. So here the Chaldeans are. To accuse the brethren. Jesus. King Nebuchadnezzar lived forever. Didn't you say that when all that type of music starts, everybody is to bow down and to worship. Well, there are some, they ain't bowing down. They gonna continue to worship what they know is the almighty to worship. 
So you know King Nebuchadnezzar in his mental illness and his narcissistic personality became quite angered and sent for them. Because see, he had seen God work before with them. And he had sent them to rule over areas of his province. Now, I don't know about any other leader, but any time you put somebody in charge of something and you go away, you're trusting them to do what you say do. But now I have officials in my kingdom that deny to do what I say to do. You got to bring them forth. We're going to have to make an example of them. And when we start to stand up for God, and we start to move in the realm that he wants us to move. We will be put in the same position because we will be what the Sunday school lesson said on last Sunday, children of the light. So that means that you have an eye on you. People are watching to see what you're going to do. So when we begin to stand up for God and say for God, I live and for God, I die. The accuser of the brethren will try his best to make an example of you. So the king brought them forth, standing before the people, standing before his high court of counselors and princesses and all those that were supposed to be in charge with the king. And he says to them, paraphrasing, so I set up an image and I set up some music to play and when you hear it, everybody, you ain't no exception. I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of office I had set you up in. Even you must bow down and worship the golden image that I set up. And if you have a problem with that, then I will at that same hour cast you into the lake of fire. Now I really like the response of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because when you have made up in your mind that you are committed to God and when you have become decisive in what it is that you're going to do, then you don't have to wait for the horn to sound to not bow down. You can say right now, they said, oh king, we will not well, first they said, we're not careful. That means that we're not choosing our words softly so that your heart will be softened. And we're not trying to dance around what it is that we're ready to say to you. We're not careful. We're bold and we're mighty. And we will not bow down to worship any golden image that you've created. King became furious and raised with anger. He began to even say that I will throw you into the fire and then who will deliver you out of my hands? And they said to him, the God that we serve will deliver us from the fire and he will deliver us out of your hands. But if he doesn't, still, so be it. We will not bow down. Now that's an example of what it means to be committed. When we know how powerful and how mighty and how just great and how loving and how delivering and how the presenter of salvation is for us that God can do and be. We choose to stand with God. And whatever happens, I would rather face God than rather face the devil. Because if I face the devil, I got God on my side. But if I face God, who 
going to stand with me against the God Almighty. So I've committed that I will stand with God. And wherever he takes me, I'm going to be committed to the manifestation of what he wants to do in my life. The three boys. Oh, how the king began to get so mad. His facial content even began to change. He became so mad and enraged, he told them to heat the fire seven times harder. I don't know about y'all, but when you start messing with the right numbers, those are the numbers that God has chosen as his numbers. First, he started to mess with the three. Then he started to mess with the seven. Where he said the seven is the level of completion. It's the level of when things have been chosen to be perfect. When God created the earth and everything in it. On the seventh day, he rested from doing all that because it was finished. You start messing with the number seven. You start messing with God's fire. God put in his heart. Heat it up. Because I'm about to send my child down to walk in the midst of the fire. Heat it up. Because heaven is about to render fire. I'm going to prove it to you. It's the same fire that Moses saw. When God began to call and he looked at the bush. Fire on the bush. But the bush would not be consumed. It's God's fire. Same fire. When Elijah was in the midst of those that thought that they had power. And he let them do what they were going to do for hours long they were going to do it. Then he stepped to the platform in all his infinite wisdom and all the power that God had vested in him. And he called down from heaven the perfect fire consuming everything in its place. Just like the men, the powerful soldiers who bound up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. When they became close to the fire, the fire was so hot, anything unclean and anything Unpure was consumed. Even those men who bound the children of the light. So these men bound in all their garment, bound hand and feet, fell into the fire. And this is what we do. Today, help me with that, Kansas. God has created fire that burns everything. You can take it all away. That's unclean and unpure. Everything that has a bound on you. Everything that's inside of you that's not like God wants it to be. He will burn it up in the fire, but he will not burn you. Why? Because you have committed to God. So when the men fell into the fire. Jesus. Now it's important that we get this one understanding right. This particular passage was in the Old Testament. 
This is over 500 years before the Son of God is to be born into the earth. We are talking about a king that has mental illness disorders that he doesn't even know what God he wants to worship at what time. But when he looked into the perfect fire, he said to his counsel, did not we throw three men into the fire? Yes, 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 king. No doubt about it. We threw the three up in there. Well, as I'm looking, I see four. And the other one looks like the son of God. What this means to us is, because we are the tree part being, and at times in our lives we are bound by many things in our lives, whether it be our physical health, whether it be some mental challenges, whether there be some things that are keeping us locked up and bound before God is able to really produce and use us like he wants to. When he throws us into the fire and he starts to purify us, what people will begin to see is no longer just us, but they will begin to see the God that's in me. They will begin to see the intention that God had planned for us when he made us in his own image. They will begin to see the Son of God in us. How do we get there? It's through the commitment. How do we stay there? It's through the commitment. How do we commit? We begin to learn and understand what faith is about. How do we learn and understand faith? Because faith comes by hearing. And how do we understand that hearing? It's because we understand by the word of God. How do we develop a relationship with God? Well, he sacrificed his son. That no longer do we have to go to the priest that has to go into the holies of holies at certain times of the year. I can get down right now. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm your servant, your humble child. Oh, I come before you right now, God. Deliver me. Keep me. Save me. Sanctify me. Allow me to consecrate to you, God. Move in my life. Oh, once the fire has been sparked, how does the fire spark in me that won't go out? Commitment. Commitment will spark a fire that won't go out. Commitment will spark the fire that won't go out. So what it will do is that that fire that will continue to burn. And every time the enemy throws fiery darts at you, just like the men that threw them through the three Hebrew boys into the fire, anything unpure that would get close to you will be consumed before it hits you. Do your commitment to the fire that won't go out. I'm going to prove it to you. When I was a young boy, my mother and I were challenged off the jump of my early life. Because when God knows it, when, when the enemy finds out that you have been gifted, he will come at you even before the gift will manifest itself. But the fire won't go out. When we grew up and God had called me into his ministry and I was young and influential, they laughed at me. The young kids made jokes at me that I kind of shied away from what it is that I was supposed to do. But the fire won't go out. That Jesus himself was ready to make his move when he was 12. 
but he had to grow up a little bit. He had to become stronger in his spirit. He had to become stronger in his physical body. He had to get to have to have life experience. So when he stepped out, the fire won't go out. When I went to college, they tried to change my name. My name is Frederick. And the meaning of Frederick is peaceful ruler. That's the name that God gave me when I was born. It means something to me. It means that I have a responsibility to be even a leader in this building. I didn't know when I was first coming out that I was going to be able to be a part of a building even named Peaceful. But God in his predestined wisdom had already pre-confirmed what he wanted me to do. All right. So when I went to college, they wanted to change my name. Oh, I was cool. So they used to call me Chili P. But they didn't call me that just because I was cool. I had left home going to college, stepped out of the protective heads that was around me all my life and had stepped into the world on my own. And I got out there and I went to running fast. I was trying to think up and discover everything that I possibly could. What drink is that? I'll drink it up. What smoke is that? I'll smoke it up. What powder is that? I snorted up. So I was moving fast. But I had some friends. They didn't call me Chili P because I was cool. They said, Fred, you need to chill because you are moving too fast. I didn't realize that at that moment. But it just lets me know through this story how if the enemy can't grab you when you first come out, and if he can't grab you somewhere along the way, somewhere along the way, he'll even try to change your name so that you can nullify the name that God gave you to manifest your destiny. Oh, but when we begin to commit to God, I drop that name. Pick back up my real name, Frederick, peaceful ruler, and begin to commit to what it is that God would have me to do. Why? Because the fire won't go out. They tried to scandalize my name, but the fire won't go out. I'm sure that there's somebody in here today that the enemy has tried somewhere along the line to take your life, but the fire, it won't go out. I'm sure there's somebody in here today that somebody tried to ruin your relationship, make you move away from God, but the fire won't go out. It won't go out. It won't go out. The fire, it won't go out. It won't go out. Why? Because we commit to God. Commit to God and he will commit to you. And he will bring you out. And if he doesn't, that's alright too. But he said the fire won't go out. Stand to your feet right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Father in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I call down right now in the front of this building a fiery furnace right here, right now. Heat it up, God. Heat it up, God. One time, heat it up, God. Two times, heat it up, God. Three times, heat it up, God. Four times, heat it up, God. Five times, heat it up, God. Six times, heat it up, God. Seven times, heat it up, God. The fire 
It won't go out. It won't go out. It won't go out. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost right here, right now. I feel the fire right here, right now. Hallelujah. God is ready. Anything that's bound to anything that's impure that you need to have release. Come on, come on, come on. Get in the fire. Come on, get in the fire. Come on, get in the fire. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. Stand up right now. If you want God to deliver you, you want Him to bless you, you want Him to do a new thing in you, you want Him to move in you and commit you, you want Him to give you an understanding of what it means to be committed, I want you to step out those aisles. I want you to come down here and step in this fire that won't go out. God is ready to do what He wants to do. God is willing to sanctify and purify you. Step on into the fire that won't go out. I said it won't go out. It won't go out. It won't go out. It won't go out. Hold on. Yes, 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 yes. Walk on in. Walk on in. Walk on in. Because of your obedience, whatever God wants, whatever you need God to do for you right now, claim it right now, call it out right now, anything that you want, because you move when he said move. God is ready to do for you right now. Ask and it shall be given. Seek, ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you because of your obedience. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'm not going to beg y'all to let God do what he wants to do right here in this fire right now for you. It don't matter who you are. From the overseer on down to the youngest baby. Everything in our lives is not perfect. Some of us, no matter who we are, we still have some secrets. Whether it be in our mind or in our hearts. We might even say to ourselves, well, I don't, I don't, I don't do this or I don't do that. I don't drink or I don't smoke and I don't curse. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about anything that will keep you from being able to give you that a commitment to God will be able to manifest in your life there's a fire right here ready to burn it up hallelujah I'm glad I'm standing in this fire I know there's still impurities inside of me that God is continuing every day to burn up Keep me whole. God, take away my impurities. God, take away my stinky thinking. God, take away my procrastination. God, give me strength and drive and desire and motivation to stand in like the three Hebrew books. That anything that may come at me by standing on your word, give me the strength and give me the power. Give me the endurance of the endeavor. Give me the will to do what you would have me to do. Touch right now in this place, God. Deliver us. Burn us up right now, God. Everything that's not like you and of you, take it away. Father, we give you grace, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you thanks. Worship you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.